I'm just gonna uh, start with a song that I wrote uh, since we don't have to worry about copyright infringement. Uh, it's called All Clear. And I'll just play that and then uh, we'll get started once it uh, looks like our room is uh, full. So, All Clear. It's like 10 miles of brake lights It's what this journey feels like Every couple of yards I fight the urge to turn around It's dark and I'm alone Just trying to get home Wonder if I'll make it Keep listening for the sound And life is like a greeting card Picking one can be so hard But you have to open it To see the message inside Pollyannas are annoying Sooner or later we all hear All clear, just keep going Pollyannas are annoying Sooner or later we all become Was it north or was it south? A thousand questions in my mouth, each one fighting for some air. A little light of day, I've got this picture in my mind. How it's gonna be different this time. I feel like I'm two steps short from understanding. Pollyannas are annoying and sooner or later we all hear All clear, just keep going Pollyannas are annoying Sooner or later we all become Pollyannas are annoying Sooner or later we all hear All clear, just keep going Pollyannas are annoying Sooner or later we all become Good evening and, and welcome. <clears throat> My name is Jenny Wilder. I'm the rector of St. Anne's Episcopal Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And you have found your way to our evening prayer service on this Monday evening. Um, evening prayer in the Book of Common Prayer begins on page... I should know this by now. I want to say it's 113. And I would be incorrect. It is uh, 
begins on page 116. So if you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, then you want to open it up to page 116. If you don't have a Book of Common Prayer at home, then you can surf on over to www.bcponline.org. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a tab there for the daily office, and from there you can find evening prayer right to. Pardon me for just a second. There's a spice in the air that is causing my throat to feel like I have to cough a lot, so I apologize ahead of time. So let us just take a few moments and prepare as we begin our evening prayer worship. <coughs> Man. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thought, word, and deed by what we have done by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue now on page 117 with the Evitatory. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now if we flip on over to page 118, we'll read together the Foss Hilleron, also known as O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm for today is Psalm, I'll tell you. <clears throat> Our psalm for today is Psalm 90, 98, which can be found on pages, or page 727 in the Book of Common Prayer. That's Psalm 98. And we're just going to be reading the first four verses. So that's verses 1 through 4. So Psalm 98 found on page 727 in the Book of Common Prayer. And we will read together verses 1 through 4. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. And we're going to flip back on over to page 118. page 118 and we're going to read together glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now 
and will be forever. Amen. Now today's readings of scripture come from, I don't know if this is going to be, oh it is backwards. It's our lesser feasts and fasts. There are days in the calendar, the calendar, the liturgical calendar, where we, where we remember saints, holy men, holy women, on the day of their death. And today, we are remembering Gregory the Illuminator. And he was the bishop and missionary of Armenia in 332. Gregory the Illuminator. So we're going to be reading the readings that they prescribe to Gregory. And our first reading is going to come from the book of Acts. And if you want to read along at home, it's Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Try that and get it in the light. A reading from the book of Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own Pro, um, poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think like the deity is like gold, or like silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. And we're going to read together. Oh no, we're going to go right to the next reading. We're just going to do the reading, then we'll do a canticle. Our reading from the gospel comes from the gospel of Matthew. And it's Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 through 16. So a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A 
a city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting the lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We're going to read together the Song of Mary, which is found on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Turning over to page 120, we will read together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to read together Suffrages A, found on page 121. I will read the versicles you read and the responses, but you can read the responses. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. So I'm going to read the collect for today that comes from Gregory the Illuminator that's been written on his behalf. Almighty God, whose will it is to be glorified in your saints, and who raised up your servant Gregory the Illuminator to be a light in the world and to preach the gospel to the people of Armenia. 
Shine, we pray, in our hearts, that we also in our generation may show forth your praise, who called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to read the Collect for Peace, which is found on page uh, 123. <laughs> That's my dog, Martin. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. I'm going to turn over to page 124 and read the Collect for the Presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And then I'm going to read the collect that's on the bottom of page 124. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Now we've come to a time where if you have prayers or intercessions or thanksgivings or petitions that you'd like to share, either aloud or quietly in your heart, feel free to do that. And feel free to share them aloud in the comments below. I'm going to uh, play a hymn or a song uh, because there is a lag between what's happening on the telephone and what's happening on my laptop. Um, so we're going to offer up a time of prayer. Uh, the song I'm going to play comes from the Iona community uh, and it's written by John Bell and Graham Mall and it's called Jesus Christ is Waiting. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the street. No one is his neighbor, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend of strangers. Dancing 
Lord, we lift up to you all those who are gripped by fear in this uncertain time. And we lift up to you those hospital and prison chaplains who are doing the hard work of being in your hands and your feet and your presence in this dark and uncertain time. We offer up thanksgiving for all healthcare professionals who are working tirelessly care for God's people. And we also pray for the unemployed and we ask for God to comfort them and to offer them faith. We keep G's daughter in our prayers who has come down with the measles. She is afraid to go to the doctor and expose herself to greater risks. We offer up thanksgiving for Shelley's family, both those here close by and those who are further away. We ask for prayers for Mary's sister-in-law, Joanne, who grieves this morning's death of her brother. We pray for the homeless and those who are alone during this time. And we offer up prayers of gratitude that Heather's mom is feeling better and has joined her there. We offer up continued prayers for teachers and students in school classes and in the knowledge that they are being suspended for an even longer period of time. Lord, we ask that you be present on the floor of the Senate as they help our leaders put people ahead of corporations, to put wellness ahead of profit, and to put human dignity ahead of ego.
We offer up gratitude for scientists in all countries working tirelessly to, for the vaccine to prevent COVID-19. Yes, Lord. Lord, all these prayers we lift up to you, for you have taught us that when two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are here among us. Hear the prayers and petitions of your people, Lord, and tend to them as you see best fit. Amen. We're going to continue in the Book of Common Prayer on page 125, reading together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Friends, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury has, has invited us to put a candle or a light of some kind on our porch to remind us that the darkness does not overcome the light and COVID-19 will not overcome our light. So if you are feeling compelled to join in the lighting of, of a candle or a light on your front porch, feel free to do that. Um, also want to let you know that on October, no, August the 4th, we'll be doing Palms to Go from St. Anne's parking lot off of Fairlawn. Uh, the bishop has approved this, and if you want to come and collect some palms to take home with you uh, so that you can raise them up high during our online worship on April the 5th, um, more details to come, but they'll be available for pickup between 1 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, uh, tomorrow night we'll do evening prayer. That'll be led by Gloria. And after that at 7.30, we will do our Holy Happy Hour Bible study. And uh, then we'll do, of course, evening prayer on Wednesday evening and Compline on Thursday. Let's see. Oh, we give thanks for Jenny and for St. Anne's. Thank you for that, Daryl. And we also offer up prayers for those who serve in nonprofits who's with, who, uh, who will be needing money now more than ever when funding may decrease. Yes, Susan, yes. We're all in that boat. <laughs> so friends, um, that'll do it. Let's see. Uh, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So we'll see you soon, friends. Take care. God bless and uh, enjoy your evening. Peace.